So today on Net Positive, we are doing the uh, heat pump hot tub experiment. This is the a one ton heat pump off of a uh, water heater. That's one of the high efficiency water heaters. We found that uh, in the constant 55 degree temperature of Colorado basement, uh, it doesn't really have a lot of heat to suck out of there, so it was using the elements a lot. So I'm doing an experiment here outdoors on about an 80 degree day. And uh, I'm throwing uh, about four amps, uh, 240 volts, so 860 watts. And we're blowing about 40, 45. It's falling, it was down at 42 at one point, but I suppose that fluctuates some with the uh, cycling of the compressor. 45 degree air out. 80 degree air in so that's blowing some nice cold air out of there that would be a great way to uh, air condition the room upstairs and pump the heat down into the hot tub uh, so we're sucking out uh, 96 degree water from the spa and pumping it back in at pause that and put this out. it's coming back at 105 so it's a nine degree temperature rise I just did a volume test on this and we're running 2.2 gallons a minute. So that's just about one ton um, of heating. Now I'm gonna try this experiment over with this big fan on top blowing extra air in. This thing has a really tiny little fan on it. And it's not very loud as a result, but I'm gonna try jamming a whole bunch of extra air in it and see how much more heat we can pull out of it. So with the big fan rocking away, obviously much, much louder, and we're running warmer air out. So that was about 52, it fluctuates, about 10 degrees warmer coming out. The big question is, how much does that change the temperature of the water coming in? So it's gone up to 106.1, so we are now at 10 degrees, so one full degree change with more air, let me do the math on how much more that is. And we're still running right at four amps on, on the compressor. I thought that might go up with a little bit higher temperature, but it does not seem to make any difference. So just the added power of the fan. Uh, so 2.2 gallons a minute at an extra degree is an extra 1,080 BTUs per hour. Um, just by adding more airflow to a little water heater heat pump. Uh, so running at just under a thousand watts of power, we're getting about 4,000 watts of heat. So that heat pump is running 400% efficient. So compared to a 100% efficiency resistive element, uh, we're 400% of that. So if you were heating a hot tub this way, um, you would call, it would cost you a quarter as much for the heat part alone. Of course, your pumps, etc., are going to remain constant. And that is uh, on a warm day. Obviously, that's not going to work in the wintertime, but it uh, would be a great way. Instead of dumping air conditioning outside, just dump it into the pool. So that is the little tiny fan that they put on the top of this. Uh, again, it's very quiet. I do hardly hear the fan at all. I do hear the compressor some, but uh, why they didn't opt for a little bigger fan, better airflow, uh, is kind of a mystery to me. So as the ambient temperature goes down on that heat pump, um, efficiency goes down. And as you get down close to freezing, efficiency would be close to 100%, where it's just one watt in, one watt out, where it would be the same as a resistive heater. Now, uh, if we were to place the heat pump under the array of solar panels, where we could collect a lot more heat, our efficiency could go up. So let's check that out. So under the backyard array here, you can see I've been doing some experiments with uh, foil taping, uh, small tubing to the panels to collect heat that way. And it works, and it's certainly an easy concept. It's pretty labor intensive and uh, for the amount of heat collected. This is not the most efficient way to do it, of course, but I built these this array with these rails and I, I sealed up the gaps in between. I mounted these all frameless, so the entire array is one continuous watertight surface. So placing foam or something under these boards, I could create a ductwork where I would suck air through this entire array before going into that heat pump. And I've done some preliminary experiments with it. And uh, very, very feasible to get the temperature up 20 or 30 degrees 
cooling the panels by sucking that air through, which makes them run more efficiently, and then running that into the heat pump. So theoretically, I think we could get up to 800% efficiency. That's where we get 8,000 watts of heat out of the heat pump for every 1,000 watts we put in to the compressor.